Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Okay, here. The voice of our core boxing. But then again, you already know that, don't you? So that's why you're watching. <laughs> I don't normally do anything on a Sunday morning. I sat walk my dog, but I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd do something this morning. Get some out there. A lot of people have had a lot of things to say. Uh, first of all, I want to say well done to Lopez for beating Lomachenko, as I predicted. So I feel quite smug about that. Uh, I've jotted a few things down. So here we go. That's better. That's better. Right. Uh, I want to say a big uh, thank you to Sky Sports for keeping up the uh, consistency with the uh, appalling commentary from Bean and, uh, and all, all the Beanettes. Uh, but let's back up a little bit. It's the anniversary of Patrick Day dying. Uh, Nice to see that Eddie Earn were promoting his book on the same day that uh, Patrick Day died a year later. Eddie were crying last year, wasn't he? Well, forward a year and all he's talking about is his book. So what a scumbag. So I wish Patrick Day's family all the best and may he rest in peace. But getting on for Eddie's book, I mean, what, what can be in Eddie's book that we don't see every single day on his reality TV program that's uh, IFL or, you know, what, 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 what can be in it? Like I so said, that we don't hear about every single day. What could possibly be in it? Eddie Earn being relentless. How can, how can Eddie Earn be relentless? Somebody, somebody who's relentless is somebody that comes up from the bottom, not somebody who has been gifted everything. I don't get that. Don't... For me, somebody coming up from the bottom is somebody that's had everything took off them and worse. I mean, I don't like to use myself as or, or other people like me, but I look at people like Peter Fury, you know, 940,000 pound fine. You got 10 year. Got a 940 grand fine, didn't pay it. They locked him up for another, another two years. He then went and paid it. Just walked into the police station with it in a carrier bag. That's the true story. Actually, it was a sports bag. Now, when, when, you, when you're having everything took off you and you've done years and years in prison, and then you go again, that to me is relentless. Uh, you could put me in that little bracket to a certain extent, have everything took off you, raging drug addict, and then you come back. You face adversity. When has Eddie Earn faced adversity? When? When? When has he faced adversity? You could put Richard Towers in that bracket. You know, he was a big drug dealer in Sheffield running about. Somebody robbed his stash, so he went and kidnapped him, put an iron on the chest and held them all weekend, torturing them with an iron. You know, and, and then gets 13 years and comes back out and and starts again, gets a girlfriend, a family, he's got his own gym and he's doing all right. That to me is relentless. When have you ever seen Eddie Earn in them situations where he's faced adversity? You aren't, have you? And there's there's more stories than just the three people that I've told you about there, me, Peter and Richard. There's there's other people that have faced adversity with deaths in the family and, and being bankrupt and things like that. Well, when has Eddie Earn ever faced adversity? So... Why is he calling his book relentless? I don't get that. He's had, he's had everything gifted him. We all remember when Carl Frampton left Eddie Earn, don't we? I do. I've still got the emails, Eddie. We all know how you felt then, Eddie, don't we? When things don't go your own way. So don't be talking about being Mr. Relentless. So anyway, I don't want to talk about Eddie. He gives me indigestion. 
Let's talk about the show last night before we go, go deep on other things. <sighs> it's an hard one for me, this, because I'm really good friends with Phil Jeffries, who's Ritson's manager, and Ritson's trainer's a good friend of mine, Fano. I like them both. They're very respectful. They've always made me welcome. Uh, I thought look, Lewis Ritson were lucky last night. But there'll be times in his career where he might think he coasted it and, and, he, and he, he don't get the decision. So am I glad Lewis Ritson won? You bet I'm glad. I like him. He's likeable. He's, he's a genuine kid. He's, he's not one of them arse slickers. You get a lot of arse slickers, don't you, in boxing like Tony Bellew. I'll come to you in a minute, Anthony, the disappearing man. If you're not going to get off lightly. Uh, I like Lewis Ritson. He excites me. Uh, he, when he fights, he's on edge. You're on edge of your seat. He goes for it. He brings it. I, I just like him. He punches like a mule. I know that because I've seen him train close up. Uh, I've actually spent a bit of time with him. I like him. He's popular. He tells it straight. He's not like I've just said there. He's not an arse licker. They're not arse lickers up there. You know, the proper people. I class. Fano and Jaffa and Lewis Ritson in, in bracket like I do Peter Fury, uh, Mark Tibbs, Jimmy Tibbs, the proper, proper people. Derry Matthews, the, the, the proper. They're not up people's arseholes and kissing people's feet. So I'm glad Lewis Ritson got the decision, but I thought he had an off night last night. Uh, I've been in touch with Phil Jeffries this morning. Phil says, well, watch it with commentary down. Well, I have done. And uh, I've come to the same conclusion that I had Lewis Ritson getting beat. Now, the scorecards are going to be the one, the, the things that dominate the talk and takes it away from Lewis's win now. His team are obviously going to say they thought he won. I thought that he lost, right? But... I've also seen them fights given and nobody say a word, but everybody's going to make a big issue out of it because Terry O'Connor were texting on his phone while judging the fight. He got caught out. Now, hmm, hmm. what can we say about Terry O'Connor? What can we say about Terence O'Connor that's not already been said? Is he in the Ian John Lewis bracket? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's uh, he's either incompetent or he's corrupt, whichever it is you decide. But uh, he's the same guy that gave Tyson Fury beating John McDermott. He's gave other bad decisions, and I, I mean, I don't just mean bad decisions. I mean shocking decisions. For example. Let me just get this up on my phone. I don't like to have my phone on when I'm there. Let's have a look. Right. Terry O'Connor gave Tyson Fury John McDermott 98-92 to Fury. He gave Joseph Parker to Huey Fury 118 to 110. He gave Callum Smith 117 to 111. against John Ryder. Now, personally, I think that he needs to be put out to pasture. And he gave Ritson 117 to 111 Vasquez. Now, go and look at Marcus McDonald's card and look at Terry O'Connor's card. It's a 12-round fight. 12-round fight. Marcus McDonald and Terry O'Connor are nine, nine. They're nine rounds apart in a 12-round fight, which, which is absurd. But back up a little bit earlier in the night, we've got Thomas Ward against Thomas Asomba. That's a 10-round fight. Terry O'Connor and Marcus McDonnell are seven rounds apart on that one. How can this be? How can there be seven rounds apart 
I mean, if this if this isn't Terry O'Connor exposed as an incompetent judge or a corrupt judge, what 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 is what what is then? What where are we heading? I mean, in America they call it Monday morning quarterback day, don't they? Where everybody's an expert. Well, I call it Sunday morning raging day because after watching Everton Liverpool game yesterday. I've now come to the conclusion that well, what is going on? Van Dyke got took out by goalkeeper. Violent conduct. That's a straight red. It consider it severance pay, Michael Oliver. Take the train, get out of Dodge. And then the score at end. Anderson gets winner, and yet they, sh they show the VAR stuff to the referee, but that it's a fraction. Behind the showing, so it shows your Mane that maybe he were offside, but Sky have just shown this morning that Mane was onside. I know it's two points, but it's uh, two points robbed, isn't it? The ref, the VAR people bottled it, and the judges here. Terry O'Connor looks to me like he's already give his scorecard and he's already decided who's won, so he's just on his phone. He's on his phone. He's a judge, but he's on his phone. What is going on? Why are the British Boxing Board of Control not doing anything about this? They're not doing anything, are they? Nothing will be said. Nothing will, nothing will be done. Shocking behaviour. Shocking. It's that bad that... These people are on fortunes every weekend. They're driven up, they drive all over to these venues. They get paid. They get danger money for being in bubble. <laughs> it's unbelievable, but it's the same old people making the same old mistakes. The same old people making the same old mistakes every time. And I think I think we've all had enough of it now, haven't we? I think we've all had enough of it. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, I'll come to that in a minute. But I'm glad Lewis Ritson won, and I'd like to see Lewis Ritson fight Awara Davis now. Thomas Asomba and Ward, they've got to rematch after that fight, haven't they? That were a draw. Uh, little Tommy Ward, I like him. He's trained by Neil Fano. Uh, he'll be disappointed with his performance. I thought Thomas Asomba fought out of his skin. Taking the fight at five days' notice, he's got to be given credit. I thought he gave uh, Thomas Ward problems. But Look at the scorecards on that fight. I mean, Terry O'Connor. Look at look at the scorecards that he gave on uh, on that. I mean, Terry O'Connor gave it by four rounds to Thomas Ward. Marcus McDonnell gave it by three rounds to a somber. Michael Alexander sat on fence because he's the biggest fence sitter in boxing, isn't he? Uh, I've got no time for him anyway, Michael Alexander. You're a shit house as well, Michael Alexander. I'll be on you as soon as you make any more mistakes. But O'Connor and Ian John Lewis, they've got to go. Out of dodge. They've got to go after their performances. It's just... It's one bad performance after another. Uh Eddie Earns come out and said he thought Vasquez won. So what does that tell you? Is he back in the sky, pundit people? Or is, are we all seeing it wrong? Is Phil Jeffries right? I don't know. But boxing is very subjective, isn't it? Very subjective. But they're going to take the win, aren't they? Because there have been times when some of Phil Jeffries' lads and Fano's lads have not had the rub of the green. So I'm pleased for Ritz and I want to see him fight Oara Davis now. In an all British class, it doesn't clash. It doesn't need to be for a belt. I'm not bothered about belts. I just want to see good fights. Awara Davis, 
against Lewis Ritson. That's got to happen next. Frank Warren, Eddie Earn, pair of shit houses that you are. Get this sorted. And get the fight on. Because I like both of them. Right, moving on. Awara Davis has been sticking it to Tony Bellew. Uh, I don't know what he said. Has he said that Bellew's missus can eat an apple through a letterbox or something? And then he's took the tweet down. I'm not sure. Uh, he said he said something that she said something about people being homophobic or something. Look, Awara Davis is just doing it to get himself out there, isn't he? But the main thing is Awara Davis... It's been has said what everybody's been saying for months. Tony Bellew is a kiss ass. He's a kiss ass. Peter Fury's leaving the bubble. Bellew's well, Peter Fury's leaving the bubble. Straight on the phone to Eddie. Kissing ass. Rimming. Bum lick. Now, Bellew, the disappearing man, he's managing more fighters than MTK at the moment, isn't he? But yeah, he told us he was going to disappear, never to be seen on TV again. Every time I sit, turn TV on, I see Tony Bellew. I'm sick of seeing him. The man gets up my nostrils. But the only thing that does get up there at the moment, because there's no good beak about. But am I team Awara Davis? Yeah, I like Awara Davis. Who would I be for if he fought Lewis Ritson? I'd want Lewis Ritson to win. I want Lewis Ritson to beat him. Uh, I think it'd be a good fight. I think it's a very evenly matched fight. Uh, they're both probably top 15 in world across the board. Uh, let's have a look what else we've got. We spoke about Lomachenko getting beat against Lopez. I don't really want to give that airtime because there's be a lot of kiss asses on YouTube talking about it, won't there? I said what I said in one of my previous videos. I fancied Lopez to win. I thought Lomachenko's been there for the taking. I thought Luke Campbell... Uh, Managed to show that he can be beat. Although he, he, he couldn't keep it up, could he? He did have a, a good round or two against him, but it were chinks in arm and I think Lopez. I think youth, youth got him through. He's had a lot of fights, hasn't he, Lomachenko? He must be getting on for 400 fights. So we are turn pro. We've covered the Patrick Day anniversary of him dying. God rest his soul. Luda Bella's come out and said, why is Terry O'Connor on the telephone on Twitter? Uh, I saw Jane Couch's response to it. Jane Couch is very vocal about Ian John Lewis. There's a lot of people vocal about Ian John Lewis and a lot of people vocal about Terry O'Connor. These people are shocking. They are ruining lives. They're ruining, ruining them. It's nice when you get a good decision against you uh, for for you. Like Everton will feel very fortunate this morning. Uh, and I think Lewis Ritson's team will feel fortunate this morning. But good luck to him. But I don't wish Everton good luck. Not uh, not how they not how they played yesterday. And I want to know if Terry O'Connor's going to come out and explain his card. I want to know. Who made the decision at VAR? Are they going to come out and explain their decision at Everton yesterday? That's what I want to know. I think people should be made accountable. For example, if if I do anything on YouTube, anything, if we do anything on YouTube from the IP address in the office and it comes back on us, you get kicked off. So we have to be accountable. So, are these people accountable? Well, Boxing Board of Control licensees don't have to speak or give interviews. That's why Howard Foster's never come out and explained about the growth stoppage. He might do to certain people behind the scenes, but he can't do it in public. But it will it'll be in his book. Now, Terry O'Connor doesn't have to come out and explain how he came to them scorecards. If he did, all he would say is, and he's already probably whispering this to his pals, well, that's what I were looking for. In fight. I like fighters that do this, and I like fighters that do that, and blah de blah There's a way around it. The rules are there to be manipulated, a bit like VAR. 
when they're showing the replay on VAR yesterday, they didn't exactly put the, they didn't set it up properly uh, to show the VAR people, in my opinion. I think Jermaine Jenner's got it spot on. But uh, I can't get over it. I can't go over bad decisions. With, it's like every weekend, every Sunday, Monday, we're talking about bad decisions. Uh, I think we'll finish off with Steffi Ball, Steffi Ball, Steffi Ball's tweet. I'm going to finish off with Steffi Ball's tweet. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Here we are. This is Steffi Ball tweeting. Now you listen here, hashtag Terry Harper. You're boxing in four weeks and any more of that shit, like in your last fight, you will be going back to the ch down to the chip shop. Yes, but my nose hurts, Andrew. Now, Terry Harper doesn't run her Twitter. What Steffi's done there when he's... Let's have a look what time he put that out. Oh, God. He must have been feeling left out watching Sky Boxing last night, so he's had to put that out. Steffi Bull, in the lead-up to the Jonas fight, were in his uh, van with Super Ray and Terry Harper. Now, and he admitted that he runs a Twitter so we know that we know that in this area for three years, but he must have forgot that he runs her Twitter. So he's having yet another conversation with himself on Terry Harper's Twitter. What? That's strange. That's a, that's a strange, strange man. That Steffi, you got a problem? Come see me. Come and see me. Stop hiding behind your Twitter and all your little cronies. Come and see me. All right. So. Talking to yourself like that, that's a sign of madness, that, you know, it's what people do in jail. So I think that's about it. Just a little little teaser for you all today. Uh, now that I'm getting back back to good health, uh, we'll, we'll probably do uh, a few more Zooms this week and that, because I've got a lot on this week. Loads on. I'm going to Essex at weekend. So shout out to uh, Matt Skelton. I'll come and see you amongst a few other people. Um, you should have a big interview this weekend for you all. All being well. It's all good, positive stuff. All right, so everybody enjoy your Sunday. It's quarter to 11, so this should be out about quarter past 11. I'll probably get this out for, and then I can go about my day then. All right. So, well done to Lewis Ritson getting the decision, but I thought he lost Lewis. Unlucky Thomas, Som uh, Thomas Somber against Ward. I had Ward to beat Thomas Somber, but it didn't happen. I like Tommy Ward as well. He's a nice kid. Maybe Tommy Ward might take the Josh Whale fight now. Who knows? That'd be a good fight, wouldn't it? Josh Whale against Tommy Ward. be a very good fight. Let's see if Dennis can make that fight, eh? I don't know how, right? Like, because there'll be no ticket deals at the moment, will there? <laughs> I'd like to see Curtis Woodhouse against Liam Cameron at BKB. That'd be a good fight, wouldn't it, as well? What do you reckon, Kurt? You reckon you could cope with Cannonball? So, I think that's just about covered everything. Well done to Lopez. He'll be... Uh, Touted that's number one guy in the world now, won't he? But they'll have to have a rematch, won't they? Probably. Lomachenko rematch and give him another payday. So I think that's about it. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Alloys. How you doing, AJ? Hope you're well.